Hi, my name is Madeline Roper, and this is my lesson on when to use commas. I have five rules for when to use a comma. Other than that, you do not need it in the sentence. So we'll go over them and go over some examples. So first rule is you need a comma in between two independent clauses. Independent clauses are sections of a sentence that could stand alone as sentences by themselves. So that means they've got a subject and a verb and convey a whole idea. If you've got two independent clauses, you're going to need a comma and a conjunction. So we've got conjunctions here for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Two independent clauses, you use a comma and one of these. It spells out fanboys, so kind of easy to remember. Um, and along the line of fanboys, all my examples are OU football because that's where I went to college. Um, so here's an example. The team scored a touchdown, comma, and the kicker made the goal for the extra point. So the team is our subject here in this first clause. Scored is our verb. We got a full idea. That's a sentence. And then the kicker is our subject. Made is our verb. Full idea. We got a full sentence. Um, so if you read them on their own and they make sense on their own, you're going to have a comma and a conjunction there. We chose and there. Kind of here's a, here's a way to trip you up. The team scored a touchdown and made the two-point conversion. Again, the team scored a touchdown, full sentence, but made the two-point conversion is not, so you do not need a comma. You only need a comma in between two independent clauses that could stand alone as sentences themselves. That's the first rule. Second rule, introductory ideas. So you do need a comma after an introductory idea in a sentence. This is a phrase that kind of starts out the sentence but is not a full sentence. Let's look at an example. Despite the rain, OU football fans filled the stands on Saturday. Despite the rain cannot stand on its own, and it comes before an independent clause. If you have a fragment that cannot stand on its own as a sentence and comes before an independent clause, you need a comma after it. So despite the rain, not a sentence on its own, needs a comma after it. All right, the next rule is unnecessary information. So you need a comma before and after unnecessary information in a sentence. Kind of the way the trick I use is if I can read the sentence without that bit of information in it and it still means the same thing, then it needs the commas. Let's go over an example. The OU football coach, Lincoln Riley, called a timeout. So let's read it without the part in the commas. The OU football coach called a timeout. It still means the same thing. Our subject is still the exact same. So when we read it, the OU football coach called a timeout, we know that Lincoln Riley is the unnecessary information there. So because it's unnecessary, we need a comma before and a comma after. That's unnecessary information. A counterexample here. The player who sustained an injury left the game. If you just read the player left the game, you don't know why, you don't know which player. So therefore, it is necessary information. You don't need the comma. You only need the comma before and after unnecessary information. That does not change the meaning of the sentence. All right. So our next rule is lists. If you have a list of three or more items, you need a commas in between the items in the list. The quarterback, comma, Wide receivers, comma, and running backs ran drills before the game. The list here is quarterback, wide receiver, running back. We've got commas in between the items on the list. You do not need a comma after the last item on the list, only in between. So you got to make sure those commas are in between that list. Now, the rule is a little bit different if you've got a list of only two elements, two items. A lot of time they're adjectives. Um, so the last rule here is that you need a comma in between two items on a list, but you can also have and, but you don't need both. So two items, comma, or an and, but never both. Let's look at an example. The quick, comma, agile wide receiver caught the ball for a touchdown. We've got two adjectives on our list and a comma in between. Kind of how they trip you up here. Um, you can also write it as the quick and agile wide receiver caught the ball for a touchdown. So this is correct, and you do not need a comma with the and. So if you've got a list of two, you can do a comma or you can do an and, but you don't need both. So let's go over all the rules. So you need a comma between two independent clauses in a sentence. You need a comma after an introductory idea in a sentence. You need a comma before and after unnecessary information in a sentence. 
need a comma between your lists and between elements.